check the mic and make sure it sound right. Hi, I'm DK Will, and this is DK Will Talk About It. And I'm going to do this quick video, and believe it or not, folks, I'm going to try to convince you to be institutionalized. <laughs> now that sounds pretty crazy, doesn't it? Because if you look at the definition of institutionalized, what it refers to in the context that I'm using it is of or relating to someone who has been committed to an institution such as a prison or an insane asylum. Okay, so that's one of the definitions of institutionalized, but that's not the definition that I want you to take to heart or to follow. But I do want you to be institutionalized. Let me explain. I'll start by referencing this article regarding U.S. Bank. And U.S. Bank closes four greater Cincinnati branches in the banking and financial services of the Cincinnati Business Courier. Courier. But this article brought out that they closed four Cincinnati branches. Now, think of all the videos that I've done before regarding the stable or lack of stability for our banks. Well, how about this article here? I, I, I can't read this because I need a subscription, and so I'm not, I'm not going to be able to read this article. And we're not going to listen to it either. Um, well, let's preview it for a minute, see what it does. I, I've never done this before. U.S. Bank US closes Bank. four greater Cincinnati branches. By Steve Watkins, staff reporter, Cincinnati Business Courier. U.S. Bank has closed four branches in greater Cincinnati, but they're not the typical banking offices. U.S. Bank, the largest bank in greater Cincinnati by deposits, closed its branches last month inside four Procter & Gamble Company buildings in the region, U.S. Bank spokesman Evan Lapiska confirmed. The Interesting. Yeah, they're trying to minimize it. Let's see if they can minimize this. Not the same bank, but a U.S. banking giant accused of abruptly closing accounts, violating customers' rights as financial oversight investigation begins. This is a report from July 29th, 2023 in the Daily Hodl. And in this article, it mentions... A U.S. financial giant and two British banks are reportedly being investigated over accusations that they debanked clients because of their political views. Wow. The banking arm of American Express, as well as Metro Bank and Yorkshire Bank of the U.K. are being investigated by Her Majesty's Treasury amid increasing concern regarding politically motivated unbanked, unbanking practices. Now, isn't that crazy that have you ever considered the possibility that the bank doesn't fail just because of poor financing and poor management, but your bank account fails because they don't like or find out that they don't like your political views? Thank God I'm politically neutral. I just hope they don't let my account go uh, utility neutral and I can't use it. <laughs> yeah, folks. Banks are institutions. And the United States' largest banking institution lost 75 billion dollars in institutional deposits as customers demand higher yields this report from daily hodl is also july 29 23 75 billion dollars in institutional deposits and this takes us to our introduction where i want you to be institutionalized i'll continue to explain but this article mentioned that billions of dollars in institutional cash is existing in jp morgan in search of higher yields according to a new report new numbers show the amount of cash deposits at jp morgan's corporate investment bank fell by 75 billion dollars in the second quarter of 2023 according to the financial times it says people and corporations with large amounts of cash have been shifting away from the banking giant and 
pay close attention. The traditional banking system at large to, to utilize digital banks and money markets, which typically offers 4% or more on insured deposits. Bank, traditional banks are also witnessing a transition away from non-interest sparing accounts. Bank of America, another behemoth, says corporate clients now hold 60% of their cash in interest bearing accounts, representing a 30% jump from one year ago. Bank of America says the expenses it pay, it's paying on interest have surged twice as fast as the interest the bank itself is earning through loans and interest bearing assets. How long can you last if your expenses were twice as much as you were earning? Now, I'm not trying to intimate that Bank of America is going to fail. They're too tightly, tightly clothed with Ripple when they're ready to release that. But what you can see here is that the institutions are pulling their money from banks and seeking better places to put their money. And like I mentioned, that takes us to what I mean by I want you to be institutionalized so much like these banks became politicized I want my audience to consider becoming a little bit institutionalized and that doesn't mean put in prison or in a crazy house or an insane asylum however they described it I don't want to be um, inconsiderate in my use of terms because I don't feel negative about people who have mental illness at all but you can see here align with the smart money spot institutional buying well if you can spot institutional buying you should also spot institutional selling correct and so if the institutions are moving from the banks maybe becoming institutionalized in harmony with my prior videos and kind of sliding away from the banks as well for better returns is a good advice for the audience because it says here that institutional buying and selling determines whether you lose excuse me win or lose in a stock market i'm just going to say in the market because we, we talk about the crypto market here and the currency markets and the precious metal markets we don't we don't generally talk about the stock market to win consistently you'll need more than a few small time buyers on your side that's a fact and I've said it many times. Us regular folks, the retail investors, and even accredited investors of not great means. Because I'm an, I'm an accredited investor. We don't move the market. Institutions move the market. Institutions are professionally managed large pools of money, sorry about that, such as mutual funds, banks, Pension funds, insurance firms, hedge funds, institutions often take weeks or months to build their positions in a stock. That kind of steady buying is the upward propulsion and support you want behind your crypto. <laughs> Let me put a word in there for them. And see, that's what's been happening when I say to you about the accumulation that's been occurring here. They have been accumulating. The institutions have been accumulating. Remember, two years ago was when I did videos about Coinbase. It was even then... 50% of Coinbase's customer base was institutions. <coughs> Excuse me. The institutions can impact the price. And they are impacting the price such that they are accumulating. But for those of us who align our smart money with the institutional buying, we're going to get that upward propulsion and support that we want. So, yes, I do want you to become institutionalized. How much money are we talking about that these institutions have compared to us? So, prepare to be at least impressed in this global asset management article from Tailwinds to Turbulence, May 25, 2022. You can see it's a whole list of authors there. But here's what we want to get out of it. The past few decades presenting an outset in market environment for the asset management industry. Like I mentioned, there's a lot of jobs opening up for financial advisors. They're going to need them because people are going to have more money. Global assets under management 
rose at a generally steady pace between 2001 and 2021, thanks largely to the strength of the world's equity markets, which were able to rebound even after several severe downturns. And 2021 was even stronger. Global asset manager, assets under management grew at 12% last year to more than, to more than 112 trillion dollars, a growth rate well above the 7% average of the previous 20 years. Net flow rates were also higher than average in 2020, not 2021, excuse me, reaching 4.4% of total assets under management or 4.4 trillion at the beginning of the year. Now, this article is interesting. Of course, I'll have the links in the description of everything that I refer to, but we got the point here, folks. When I say I want you to be institutionalized, I basically want to say you need to align your money with the smart money and not just the smart money, the big money that can give you that upward propulsion. So I don't want you to become inter, inter, institutionalized, I'm sorry, to your detriment, because, see, I encourage thinking for ourselves. That's what I encourage all the time. And anyone who watches my videos knows that. So I don't want you to become a drone, so to speak, and, and only think of this as a means of determining your assets. However, because it says here that if someone becomes institutionalized, they gradually become less able to think and act independently because of having lived for a long time under the rules of an institution. So no, I don't want you to go that far, but I do want you to be able to align your thinking with the environment like this picture here. Look at the total landscape and make some decisions. And what's a good decision now? Well, as my videos have shown, you know, the banks aren't so certain. So you don't want to put everything in the bank. If you are old school and you refuse to listen to this, I, I can't make you consider it. And I'm not going to try to make you. I'm trying to encourage you to consider the fact that even our largest bank is losing $75 billion. I remember I just compared trillions, but $75 billion of its institutional deposits. And so if the institutions are going to digital assets, it might be a good idea for us to go to digital assets because there's $112 trillion available. Now, we know that it's not all going to go there, but let's say that the assets under management decides that this is the boom economy and they just put 10%, 10% of their assets under management into the sound, stable cryptocurrency market. Look what happens to that market. It goes from a $1.12 billion to a $1.12 trillion market. What is that? A hundred times? hundred trillion. A thousand times? So is it impossible to think that if you're in the right coin, your money can go a thousand times more? Absolutely not. I don't think so at all. We've seen, we've seen tens of thousands of percent returns on cryptocurrencies. And so I just wanted to bring this out, and I wanted to help my uh, audience become institutionalized. I'm not trying to put you in prison, and I'm not trying to put you in a crazy house. What I am trying to do is telling you that follow the money means follow the institutions. <laughs> it used to be follow the banks. It still is. But now the institutions know better than the banks see they know what's going on that's why congress is getting excuses for divestment for the uh, people in congress they're making up excuses folks so i'm giving encouragement there's a hundred and trillion a hundred and twelve trillion dollars out there assets under management now a lot of my listeners don't have assets under management per se because this is talking about a specific industry but it's a big amount of money, folks. Consider being institutionalized, according to the way D.K. Will is re referring. I'm D.K. Will. This is D.K. Will talk about it, and I've talked about it. Have a wonderful day. Check the mic and make sure it sounds right.